Hi, I recently did a video about Blazor Server and pre-rendering uh, the search for search engine optimization, SEO. And meanwhile, I've been playing around with Blazor Server. I'm pleasantly surprised about uh, pre-rendering and all those things. But now I stumbled upon a problem and that is pre-rendering and jQuery. They, they don't seem to be best friends. So let's take a look at that. So what I've been trying to do is convert this Razor Pages website to a Blazor server website. Most seems to be going fine, except for the jQuery implementation. As you can see in here, there's some moving elements. So these are carousels from Bootstrap. And the jQuery makes sure that on the page load, these things start to slide. Uh, and I have another feature in here, these buttons, these that can scroll to the next section to a certain element ID. And then the accordion in here. And you see sliders. However, if we open this in Blazor server, nothing moves. All these elements that should start moving on page load didn't start. Also, these buttons are not working. They're not scrolling to the correct section. However, these Guardian buttons are working. Um, mainly because these are yeah, triggered on click and not on page load, which is important. Uh, the thing is, you might have guessed it by now, using pre-rendering, uh, the, the chance, <clears throat> let me rephrase. The cause of this happening, I assume, is that the jQuery gets loaded or started, the jQuery code gets started before the DOM actually had all the components on it, if that makes sense. Uh, so we kind of have to start this manually after rendering, after the uh, dynamic components are loaded. So the idea is we have to manually start these carousels after the, the components loaded, after the Blazor components loaded. Uh, let's take a look at the code. In my Blazor server project, I go into the shared folder. In the main layout, uh, don't worry about all the code in here. This one is on after render async. So this triggers when these, the main layout got rendered. Uh, when we are at first render, we are going to call a JavaScript function using the JS runtime. The JS runtime you can just inject the top of your component and folk void async. And this is the name I gave the function. Let's take a look at the function and my www.root.js custom jQuery. Make sure this file, of course, is added to your layout.cshtml on the bottom of the screen. And then I have this function in here, init jQuery elements, where I manually initialize the, all the carousels. So every element with class carousel, and then we're starting it. Yeah. You can give extra options like the speed and all that stuff. I found this explanation, of course, on the bootstrap pages. 
Let's see, we are working with 4.6. Let's go to carousel. And then you can find at the bottom of this page via JavaScript. And then it explains how to manually start the carousel and the options you can add like interval and all those things. So if we, so that's just that. If there's other elements or if you only want to start a specific carousel, you can say, for example, section or maybe only the carousel that's in the main div. You can do that. Anyway, if there's any other elements, I'm just going to add those below. And then you see this method. This is actually for the for something else. We'll talk about that in right now. Oops. Let's rerun it. And you see the carousel is moving. That's great. However, we couldn't do this with the scroll functionality. So let's take a look at that next. Back in the code. Let me uncomment this. So first off, of course, in this, the JavaScript, I made a function that takes an element ID. This element ID is basically the ID of the element. So the hash you'll see uh, in the URL. That should get passed. Then we get that target ID. And if we have a, an actual element, we are going to scroll to it. You can put some options in here. Anyway, also this one will have to call, not uh, after render, but on, um, on click, of course, or on location changed. I tried it in JavaScript to listen to the location changed event, but that didn't seem to work. So we are going to take the Blazor approach. So let's head back to the main layout. Let's scroll to the top. I implemented the eye disposable. That's necessary when you want to handle uh, have event handlers to dispose it of them at the bottom. I have the JS runtime, of course, to invoke that specific function, the JavaScript method. And I have the navigation manager, which has the on lo location changed event handler. So when I initialize the main layout, we want to register this event handler and assign a method to it. So this gets executed each time the location changes. In this method, we have these parameters and location change event arcs. From that, we get the location. This is quite similar as calling navigation manager.uri basically the same. Let's even try it because I'm encountering some issues with this. And then we get the element ID, which is just uh, getting the last part of the URL split. So we're splitting on this uh, hashtag. And then we get the last element of after splitting. So everything that comes after the hashtag. And then since this is a void, there is no async or task uh, supported method for location changed. 
So we do a task task run and invoke this method. Scroll to element, so the JavaScript method, this one. And we pass the element ID, which we got here, to this method. And that's about all there is to it. And like I mentioned before, we dispose of, we uh, unregister the event handler when we dispose of the element, uh, the component for uh, memory leak purposes to avoid that um or whatever let's rerun and now this actually works there's only one thing that's not working yeah you just saw this uh If I go to another page and then click on, see, it just goes to the page and it probably attempted to scroll down, but before we actually navigated. So Blazor and, jo and jQuery are once again working against each other in here. So that's not ideal. So I'll have to find a way to fix that still. But I'm not going to bother you with that. Um, cool, that's all for this video. One last thing I wanted to mention, uh, these accordions. That's nice to, to use, so let's rerun it. I'm talking about these, for example. Uh, I have some other ones on this page. Oops. Mm. Still haven't. Okay. Still haven't fixed my components to not go over HTTP when I'm on the Blazor server. But anyway, so we have these kind of collab collapsibles. Also on the home page, collapsible. It's a nice uh, animation with it. Um, I used to, I, I was using jQuery for this, but actually this is quite simple to do with Blazor itself. What we do, however, yeah, what you could do, of course, when you click this, you just keep uh, a list of yeah, which groups are toggled, I would say. And if the, the target group is open, you say, you either do, do that with an if statement, <clears throat> sorry, you either do that with an if statement and show them. But if you do that, of course, we don't have the pre-rendered elements since they would just not exist. So what I did is just work with the visible attributes, so, uh, sorry, the hidden attribute from uh, standard HTML. And yeah, so we can do that ourselves and then maybe use a CSS transition to make the scrolling nicer, oh, the animation nicer. So I what I want to say with this is uh, since Blazor server and jQuery don't seem to be working too well together, I would recommend to avoid using jQuery and Blazor server unless for components you really would waste too much time on to recreate them like carousels, auto starting carousels. I yeah, I don't want to start building those. I could, but that's a waste of time for me. So yeah, that's all I still wanted to add. See you in the next video. We might be building web shops.